Today we are going to do a treatment for you that includes a hybrid, a blend of both self-massage and myofascial yoga and myofascial release in your body. We are going to do this with the help of some longer poses or some yin style yoga, which includes longer holds for upwards of three or more minutes. And we're also going to use some massage balls. So these are called miracle balls. And while they're not absolutely essential, if you have any kind of back sensitivity, any kind of back issues, I would highly recommend these uh, first. And then we also could use a smaller ball. So a lacrosse ball, uh, yoga tune-up balls, tennis balls, etc. That would be a smaller kind of ball that are a harder kind of ball. But as we're going to learn, as we go through this, you'll understand a little bit why I think for myofascial release and really helping to create a feeling of relaxation, of feeling better in your back and in your body, of also just changing the blueprint, changing that deep infrastructure in your body. Uh, it works so much better when you have these kinds of balls that are softer and a little bit bigger and it helps you to breathe more deeply, more freely, and just more comfortably get into some of those deeper places in your body. And if you don't have a set of Miracle Balls and you'd like to get one, then click on this link down below and you can get them on Amazon. Now this is all part of my series on the Wheel of Healing and Vitality, which we're using to help have healthier and stronger backs and to become self-empowered healers. So if you want to check out the whole series here and also get a free copy of the Wheel of Healing and Vitality, then click on this link down below and join my mailing list. So along with the balls, more optionally, but again, depending on where you're at in your body, you may want to have one or two yoga blocks as well as a couple of pillows for the stretches that we are going to be doing. Now, to begin with, we are going to get into a forward fold. Now, personally, I'm able to have my legs straight. If it is hard for you to keep your legs straight, you can take either a yoga block or a pillow, place it under your leg or a bolster. You can also place pillows and more props here in your lap as you come forward. So it looks something like this. Extend your legs with whatever props that you can and then inhale if, again optionally if you can get your arms up reach up and lean forward and we're going to hold this really for at least a minute and if you have a timer and you want to do this on your own pace and you can go a little longer uh, you can hold this really for up to five minutes and the reason that we are holding our poses for longer is because fascia is the deep infrastructure of your body. I consider it to be the scaffolding of your body, which is, you know, essentially that which supports everything else. And in order to have lasting change, to release the aches and the pains and the tensions and the muscle aches and and everything else that we want to have released in our body. If we want to strengthen our body with core workouts, with muscle building kind of exercises, if you really want it to take hold, we first have to go a little deeper to get into the infrastructure and the scaffolding of the body. And fascia is exactly that. It is connective tissue, it's your tendons, it's your ligaments, it's a whole incredibly intelligent network of support that is wrapped around every single tissue, every single muscle of your body. And by design, it doesn't change all that easily. In order to, for it to change, it has to be encouraged to know that uh, your body is changing, that you're doing supportive things for it, that, that if it if it alters its alignment, then, then you're in good shape and you're in a good place. So 
longer holds like we're doing here with our opening stretches are helping to train the fascia and allow the fascia to move into a different alignment that that really prepares you for for better things to come so we're here and we're breathing now what we're also doing by being here is getting to know our backs and our body so are you feeling any tightness in any specific areas if it starts to become too much to hold any of these poses that we're holding for a longer amount of time certainly come out of it take a breath and then come back into it something like this you come up maybe move your neck your shoulders your body a little bit take one of these nice breaths and then come back down we don't need to push our limits, our, our max. We can come close to, but with yin yoga, with myofascial release, we are letting the body melt. We are taking a very different approach than what we often think of when we think of exercise and working out where we're, where we're always pushing our edges and going beyond our edges. Instead here, we're letting that just kind of happen naturally by melting by softening and by breathing and that's part of the secret for really training your fascia and allowing your fascia to shift it happens from places of feeling safe and feeling supported in your body so part of that is that if you do have back pain coming in and out of this forward bend as many times as you need to allow yourself to breathe deeply and really your breath is your guide so if you can breathe freely if you can take nice breaths then in all likelihood you are in a safe and good place if it's feeling challenging if something's restricted in terms of how you physically feel or in your breath then take the props ease out of it uh, repeat and come back into it and see how that changes your body so again, in our last couple of breaths here, I want you to feel not only your lower back, but your shoulders, your neck, your head, the back of your legs. It's all one chain. And that's something we talked about in previous videos in terms of becoming more mindful of what it is to have a back body. And that the the specific issues that are bothering you are the ones that you know are screaming and that are closer to the surface but it's really all connected and that mindfulness it's going to help you to treat yourself it's going to help you to do the things that are best for you and your body and we really are all different so we need to be able to listen to our body to feel into it to be gradual in our approach and and customize it in a way that feels right for you. Now let's slowly come out of it, sitting up, maybe even making a few circles just to allow, facilitate a little circulation and movement in our back and in our body. The next one is called the pigeon pose. And to help us get there, place your hands on the mat, come onto your knees. We can do a few cat and cows to help again create a little bit of gentle supportive movement in our back and in our body. And then if this works for your body, we'll come up into a downward dog, allowing the weight of your body to sink into your feet and into your hands, lifting up from your hips and sinking down as far as you can and then taking one foot we'll start with the right foot bring it in front of you you bend your knee bringing your foot in front of you as well so you'll feel a stretch here in your lower back and in your hip and if you really if this is hard on your knee or on your back at all 
then I would advise you to skip it. But if you can get into some version of this, this is where the props are going to come in handy. Placing either a block or a pillow under your butt here, or maybe even under the under your stomach or under your other leg. You'll see where you need some support. So again, you can get to a place where you can feel soft, where you can breathe, where you can hold it and just melt into this position. So we'll start elevated. And then again, placing props if you need to. That could include putting a pillow underneath your stomach or more than a pillow, a couple of pillows, coming down and lying here. And we'll, we'll spend a good minute breathing into it, melting into our body. Opening up our hips and our lower back. So again, for a lot of us, I know it's true for me when I first started on this journey, with my back pain, I never even really considered that my hips were related. But it's so interrelated. Lower back, hips, hamstrings, mid-back, even your adductor muscles, the ones on the inside of your thighs, they are all essentially from the inside out, it's like it's one unit. So doing things for your hips, and especially, you know, for most of us who sit in chairs and are in one position for hours at a time, our muscles around our hips get locked into place. And then if we have a few extra pounds on our body, I mean, all of that tightens up in these areas. So here we're bringing some different kind of medicine to help release that tension, to help allow that fascia to melt. So pigeon is one of the best things you can do for your back. Now, you, optionally, you can always stay here longer if that works for your body. Or we'll come back up and look up a little bit, and that helps bring our back a little bit in the opposite direction. In my case, I get an amazing stretch on my straight leg in the front there. As I mentioned, all of those muscles are all related to back health and helping us if we have back pain. And then we'll come back up first into the cat cow and we'll do a few of these if you want to work with your breath inhale as you look up exhale as you round forward come back up and then let's do pigeon on the other side so again bring your your leg in front as much as you can in front of your body. We'll start in an elevated pigeon pose. So as I said, you may feel a pretty nice stretch here, certainly in your knee, in your hip, and in your lower back. And you can pulse your way into it. So if you have any kind of tightness, and our different sides may feel pretty different. So depending on what you feel, pulse, ease your way, take some nice breaths, put whatever props you need to help support your body, both elevated and then lying down. As we take some breaths, as we melt and soften and tune into our body, And again, fascia is this wonderfully interconnected system that wraps around every muscle, every joint, every square inch of your body. You can find it in your connective tissue, in your tendons, and essentially it's got its own intelligence. When you injure yourself, 
and I'm sure we've all injured ourselves in some way, it's the fascia of your body that springs to action. So if I sprain my left ankle, my right leg is gonna spring to action and say, hey, how can I help? And as we limp along, our ability to limp along happens because our fascia has adjusted to allow more work, more of the strain of the body to be absorbed by our left leg to support our body in this new in this new way. But then let's say your left leg heals, your fascia does not automatically go back to the original alignment that it was in. So we have a new alignment in our body that we may need to train our body to release to come to a safer uh, position for ourselves. So that's what we're doing here. Our body has made thousands, millions of micro adjustments in the fascia over the course of our life. Big ones when we get injured, but really throughout our day and through all the ways that we are straining and using our body and our muscles. And it's those new alignments that often lead to so much pain and tension in our back and in our bodies because these new alignments are ideally short-term changes that become long-term positions that our body holds ourselves in. So by doing these moves, we're training our body that it's okay to change. It's okay to find a different alignment. So we're gonna come out of this pigeon pose. Again, coming up, taking a breath here. Coming back to being on both of our knees, looking up and down. Cat and cow. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> now it's time to use our balls. So we're going to start with one ball. If you have a miracle ball and if you need a miracle ball I'm gonna put a link down below so that you can get one or get a set and they're typically under $20 if you're in the United States and it's the kind of tool that you will have forever and you will your body will thank you about a million times over to have them but if you only have a smaller ball use that as well again because with fascia we're trying to melt and soften, a ball that is softer naturally is gonna help you to do that. And so what I want you to do to begin with is you're gonna place your ball really right in the soft, cushy part of your bum. And I'm starting with my left leg, my right knee is pointing up, and I'm just gently rolling back and forth. So I'm getting into that fascia, into that deep, deep connective tissue of my glutes and my bum. And that is, again, so important to release here, to get deep in there, to feel good in there to give your body some new information about what feeling good can feel like if we're gonna train ourselves and bring more release and relief to other parts of our back and our body. So you can start by rolling and then if you find a really good place, like I found a great place, and I'm just sitting and hanging out. And if anything feels too much, too intense, go back to the rolling. So you can go front and back, and then you can also make gentle circles. And then sink into another spot, 
And ideally, I want you to hold each spot for at least 10 seconds. But if we can get up to 20 seconds or 30 seconds or even up to a minute, that is great. And you can keep exploring. So the back and forth, they're like tests and they soften and they start us off and then see where you can sink in and hang out in a new spot. So I want you to find at least three, but maybe even five or six spots here where you're sitting on your ball. And if you're using a smaller ball or a harder ball, again, and if it's feeling really intense, then just hold for as long as you can breathe and feel that softness happening. So we're going to do this on one side. Give that first side a little break and switch. So I'm just going to turn my body around. You don't have to do this, but I want you to be able to see what's happening. Again, coming into that soft area of your bum. Again, you may notice that you have one side that it feels quite different from another, or one side that you use a lot more than another or has a lot more issues. Now, if you know that even before you start using your balls, to do it safely, I would advise to start with the side that has less issues going on. It's gonna help you to get to know your body to get to know your equipment, to help you to breathe more deeply before you switch to the side that you might want to be a little more sparing. Again, we're finding three to five or six spots in our glutes where we can sink in and hold. And you can always go back to back and forth movements, circles, to help melt, release, give the area a little opportunity for a little more circulation before you sink in and hold. So here's my last spot that I want to hold on this side. Feeling already so good. So really, this is the massage. Even though it's myofascial release, it's like I'm giving these my butt an amazing, amazing massage. And from here, we're going to take it up just a little notch. So I'm going to go back to my first side that has now had a little rest. And I'm going to place the ball in the exact same spot, but this time I'm going to cross my leg and come up onto the ball. So. I'll place the ball here. I'm going to come on the ball and then bring my leg up. And now those deeper muscles have come even more to the surface. So making my circles, going back and forth, and then finding some places to sink in here. Now, depending on your hips and how open you are, your knee may be up here higher or more in the center or maybe even you can and you can play with this if you're more on the open side bringing your knee down and bringing your foot up all of that is going to get into different tissues and different fashion just a little bit more and a little bit differently So again, we're finding a few spots and holding them anywhere from 10 to 30 or 60 seconds. And that's where mindfulness comes into play. These little movements of your leg. Do I flex my foot? Do I keep my foot relaxed? It's how it feels in your body. You have your own unique body. I want you to do what works well for you and you know you're in a good place when you can breathe, when it feels like I can just melt and stay on it. All right, let's do this one more time. And on this last side, just to show you, I will also use 
my little ball. So it's exactly the same thing, but as I said, oh yeah, I feel it way more intense. Now in my case, I, will, I can deal with the intense pressure. I've been doing this for years, really. But I also know that I cannot sit and hold it for anywhere near as long without it really kind of hurting a little bit. So if that hurts in any way that helps, that has you feeling like it's too much, I'm tightening up, I'm restricted in any kind of way, then that does not most effectively get into fascia. You're actually making the job even harder for yourself. So build up to it, but start with the miracle balls and maybe that's all you're ever gonna use. I know that for so many years, all I ever used was the miracle balls and it's incredible. They are called miracle balls for a really great reason. So only use the small ball if you need to or if you want to, but with a lot of wisdom and really with a lot of ease into your body. All right, so we've got a couple more moves. I'm gonna go back to using the Miracle Balls. <clears throat> and this time, I'm gonna lie down. Place it under that one glute. So before we went back and forth and we held it. And now we're gonna twist. So, with the ball that's under your glute, place that same leg across to the other side and come across your body. So I can feel that really deep into some muscles that, you know, it's like I didn't even know I had them. And that's how it works with fascia release. We need compression. Compression really is one of those key ways to help train the fascia that it can make a change. So just holding this gentle twist with the ball underneath, I'm getting into so many of these deep muscles that, that also impact my lower back, my mid back, and maybe even your upper back and your neck. And so by releasing these deep muscles, it's a huge chain reaction into your whole body. And I feel it, I feel everything just kind of melting all the way through this whole area. And it feels amazing. It really is like giving yourself a massage. And so again, I'm gonna turn around so you can see the other side. Placing the ball in that same spot under your glute. Place your leg across your body and just rest there. Taking your breaths, easing into it. Since we're spending longer amounts of time in each position, it's also an amazing opportunity to get to know your body. Maybe even send some feelings of appreciation and gratitude. Even I know for a lot of us dealing with pain, but if your body wasn't making the millions of adjustments it makes all the time, I don't even think we can conceive of just how much worse it would be. And if you are on the track to getting better and you see any kind of noticeable improvement, maybe even right now as we hold these positions. Well, again, what a great reason to have some gratitude. And when you bring that into your awareness, that helps the letting go, the relaxation, the release, the benefits to be that much more profound. Excellent. All right. So 
Last one. <clears throat> We're going to take both balls now and place them under our glutes. Or actually, yeah, right there on the glutes. So we're starting in the same place we've been working all along, essentially like right at the, the roots, the anchor, the, the trunk of our body and resting on both balls at the same time. And I feel it, I feel a deep release, a deep lengthening and a stretch here, not only deep into my glutes, but on the front of my body. And maybe even gently, if you feel any of those spots on the front of your body that are benefiting and getting a stretch, you can gently, and it's really soft. It's like less than one out of 10 pressure. Make a fist, make a, use the palm of your hand and gently make some circles or gently press and rest helping to let go and melt tension all throughout your body. Staying in each spot, again, it's up to you if it's 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. I'm ready to move on. So I'm gonna take my balls and now simply keeping them side by side, I'm going a little higher up my back. And for me, when I leave my glutes and I go, you know, this is essentially where I put them is about an inch above or a couple inches above my glutes. So I'm into my pelvic area. Again, I feel it. I feel it so deeply into that infrastructure, into that scaffolding of my back and of my body. And it's up to you to decide how long you want to spend in each spot. We talked about it, that you can stay in each spot but take breaks. So if I just lift up a little bit, or if I take the balls out and I go flat for a moment to just take a breath, give my back a little bit of a break, and then go back in the exact same spot, that is a perfect way to tailor this to your back and your body, to ease in be soft, to melt and relax. I'm gonna go a little higher now. Another spot that, you know, when I, was really when I started using the miracle balls that I realized just what a miracle it was, is this spot right here in the small of my back. You know, this is where for most of us, we hold so much tension because of the ways that we round our body. And so the balls are gently pressing into all of that infrastructure and going in the opposite direction. And so it opens everything up again, softly, organically, wonderfully. So good. 30 to 60 seconds, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on how it works for you. And then I'm gonna go just a little bit higher. And you can really take it all the way up your back, all the way even onto, the, take one ball up to the back of your neck. It's very forgiving. And it's, you know, again, it's about listening and seeing what feels good for you. Right now, I've got them here in the middle of my back. And I'm gonna take them up to my shoulder blades, up to the scapula. So I'm gonna stay here in the middle for another couple of breaths. Exhalation with 
with each inhalation, it's like I, I can even say to myself, let me receive some good medicine. And with each exhalation, I let it go and I return it and I melt into my body a little more. So I move it up a little bit higher. Here I am. I even felt a little adjustment. I felt so good. And I'm into the shoulder blades, which is also opening me up right here in my upper chest, down my arms even. And so here, as I said, we start to feel, really get to know the truth that it's all connected the same way that we are often so rounded and holding positions in our back that put a lot of strain into certain areas, which is why we have back pain, now you get to feel the opposite. Okay. My chest opens up a little bit. If my arms extend out a little more, how does that start to feel in my back and in my body? I can breathe here. I have relief and release here. That's what's so important about having the bigger and the softer bulbs because the smaller ones, you may feel like, oh, it's getting into places, but you can't breathe the same way. And if you can't breathe into it, you simply can't relax into it as much as you otherwise could. Your breath is your guide. So use the tools that help you to breathe, to melt and relax. And that is how you're gonna change that scaffolding, that infrastructure in your body. One more nice breath. Letting go. And then from here, we've been doing a lot of back bending. So, if you can sit cross-legged, if you want to have your legs out in front of you, first maybe sit tall, make a few circles in your neck, in your shoulders. You can turn your body from side to side. Bring some gentle movements into your back. And just a, a couple of breaths again put some props in if you like and we'll come forward and it's not about forcing it we're just helping to let the blood flow to let the circulation come after the deep medicine we just gave our back and our body but there you have it myofascial release for your back, for your body, for your health, helping you to become an empowered self-healer on the road to health and vitality. So in our wheel of healing and vitality, as we've seen, we did some self-massage to help make our muscles more supple, to help relax them, to help relax ourselves. And we're also have now just done some myofascial release to allow that infrastructure, that deep connective tissue of our body, an opportunity to reset itself, to retrain our body, to have a new alignment. And we need that first. We stay in those places, maybe even repeat them a couple times a week so that when we do something more vigorous, more dynamic stretching, more core work that are other integral parts of the wheel of healing, it's going to be so much healthier for our body and the results are going to be so much better and longer lasting as well. Again, if you want to get a copy of the wheel of healing and join the mailing list and stay in the know as we post new videos, click on the link that's down below in the show notes and in the comments and also check out the playlist for all the videos on YouTube that are part of our YouTube series. And then finally, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so you get notifications every time I post a new video. Thank you so much. I hope that 
is really powerful medicine for you. I know it's life changing for me. I just want to wish you a healthy back, healthy body, lots of vitality, and we'll talk to you real soon.